Well, good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Bill Jackson, General Manager of Peterbilt Motors Company and Vice President of PACAR, our parent company. I want to welcome Governor Perry, hey. Representative Keffer, Representative Tan Parker, Commissioner Brian Shaw, Representative Myra Crownover, and all our other guests today to Denton, Texas, the headquarters of Peterbilt Motors Company and our U.S. Manufacturing Center. Now, just a couple things about this plant. This plant is one of the most environmental friendly automotive plants, not just truck, but automotive plants in the world. It's zero waste to the landfill. It's ISO 14001 certified. It has implemented numerous energy conservation programs to reduce or eliminate our impact on the environment. In addition, the vehicles produced in this facility are 80% recyclable. With Peterbilt being the commercial truck technology leader in fuel efficiency and the leading producer of natural gas powered vehicles, we are very excited to have everyone here today to promote alternative fuel technologies and to foster a strong sense of environmental stewardship here in the state of Texas. One of our special guests today is businesswoman and former teacher who represents the Senate District 12, including parts of Tarrant County and Denton County. She is the chairman of the State Health and Human Services Committee and a member of committees on finance, nominations, and governmental organization. During this year's legislation session, she led efforts to make health care more efficient and effective, to help children in foster care thrive and improve food safety and protect the privacy of personal medical records. She has been recognized for a pro-business fiscal fiscally conservative voting record in every session in which she has served. She and her husband, Mike, operate an aircraft component manufacturing company right here in Denton. They have five adult children and three grandsons. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our good friend, Senator Jane Nelson. I don't want to show my bias, but as a UNT alum, I'm really excited to see a mean green vehicle. Well, as you heard, I represent parts of both Tarrant and Denton counties in the Texas Senate, and that's where the lion's share of Barnett Shale sites are located. These new laws are welcome news to people in the communities that I represent. Our children and our grandchildren breathe this air, they drink this water, and like every other North Texan, I want to make sure that we are protecting the public health. You heard that I am chair of the Senate's Health and Human Services Committee, and people don't often see this as a nice bit, but I think it's a very nice bit. Like many in North Texas, I recognize the profound economic benefits that this natural gas formation has brought to our local and state economy at a time when we desperately need it. I'm also cognizant of the ever-present need to generate homegrown sources of energy. Our economy, especially in Texas, cannot flourish without energy, but none of us can flourish without our health, and that is our top priority. And I am so happy to see this legislation before us today. I thank the industry for working with us on these issues, and I thank all the citizens who have shown us that people care about our communities here in North Texas. Texas, we do it the right way. We are united in wanting to make sure that our environment is preserved for future generations of North Texans. Now it is my privilege to welcome someone who cares about our environment and who works tirelessly to promote Texas as the best place in the nation to do business. He's no stranger to anyone here. I had a mile-long biography. I'm, I'm not going to read your bio, Governor. He is, you know, he 
he's done it all. His journey from Paintbrush, Texas, to the governor's mansion. He, uh, the United States Air Force pilot, state rep, then went on to Ag Commissioner. He was Lieutenant Governor when I served in the Texas Senate, did a great job there. Longest serving governor in the state of Texas. Under his leadership, we've seen more jobs created in Texas than the entire rest of the nation, and we are so grateful for that governor. Senator, thank you. I, um, on a day-to-day -day basis, if, if I have to, if I had to be in a, a, a conflict and I, and I only had one person to, to be with me in that conflict, and sometimes we found ourselves that way back in, uh, through the years, Senator, but uh, Jane Nelson is probably one of the most capable, passionate, loyal uh, friends that, that anyone could have, and, and I am so pleased that uh, uh, she continues to selflessly um, serve our state and she makes a real difference. So Jane, thank, thank you. you for what you do. And um, listen, uh, Bill, I just want to say thanks for taking me through a tour of the, of the facility. That was just fascinating. I, and and the, it didn't make any difference where you went to school. They had maroon trucks back there. <laughs> I'm telling you, I saw a burn orange one. I mean, they, they, whatever your school colors are, they can fix you up at Peterbilt. So uh, it, it is pretty funny. It's uh, um, those of you that are familiar with uh, this plant here, um, yeah, you know the story. I mean, the idea in the, in the 1980s that somebody would leave California and come to Texas, uh, Meyer. I mean, that just didn't happen. Uh, but but they were they were visionary. <laughs> they were the vanguard. Uh, they understood something uh, that was coming and that maybe no one saw, but to bring this plant to Texas uh, in 1980 uh, and in 1993, I think, uh, was, was the, uh, the next big move. But uh, those of you that are unfamiliar with all of that, let me just sum it up. Uh, the, the important part of what occurs in, in this facility is that they employ Texans, producing one of the great products in the world uh, and uh, powered, I might add, by Texas natural gas. Uh, and the <laughs> and the, that is something I think we all can get behind. Uh, this factory stands as yet just another example of what's possible when innovative minds are given the freedom to explore, to try new approaches, to meet challenges in, in unique and, and exciting ways. And I tell people, I said, that's the Texas model. That's, uh, uh, that's what we've been doing here for uh, a decade. And um, Tan, it, the, the verdict's in. It works. Uh, it's working from the standpoint of creating jobs. Texas is home to the most new jobs in the nation since 2001. 45% of the new jobs created in the United States since June of 2009. Uh, it's also working from the standpoint of uh, cleaning up the air. When our ozone levels are down by 27% from 2000 to 2009, the most improvement in the nation, I might add, our NOx emissions down by nearly 58 percent. That's caring about your people. That's taking care of our citizens in this state by implementing a program that is working. And I know you all have heard me say a lot in, in the last few days about the EPA's continuing effort to take over our regulatory uh, process. And you know, for reasons of their own, Washington insist on, on this new layer of, of bureaucracy, layers that are going to cost jobs, and, and, and frankly, it's not going to improve the air. Um, I, I just happen to think that uh, that's certainly not reason enough 
whatever reasoning they're using to, to destroy our very successful flexible permitting process. I know Brian's going to talk about that in a minute. Um, but it, it's just a continuing Washington um, story of them wanting to take over more and more control of the states. But we're not here to talk about them today. So, uh, you know, that's uh, the, the, a dreary story, frankly. We're here to talk about upbeat, bright, and green. Uh, and we're here to talk about smart, efficient government. And, and, and with that, let me just segue into this just finished 82nd session of the legislature. They passed several bills that are going to help Texas continue to lead the nation in energy production, expand our use of alternative sources of power in an area that we already are a national leader, I might add. Senate Bill 20 that is um, sponsored by, authored by, taken through the legislature by the very capable representative Jim Keffer who's with us today. It's going to, yeah. It's going to create a clean transportation triangle between Houston, Dallas, and San Antonio. Now think about that area, if you will. If my memory is correct, 85% of the total population of Texas lives in that triangle between Dallas, Houston, San Antonio, and back to Dallas, helping add that infrastructure that's necessary to allow natural gas fuel trucks like this one that we're looking at right here today uh, to expand their range across our state. That's been a vision for so many for so long and now it is becoming a reality because of the leadership of people like Jim and these members of the legislature that are here today. I, I, I can tell you it, it is one of the more exciting times for me to see Texas starting to truly lead this charge of using our natural gas that's produced right here in America to move our big heavy haul trucks. Now we also passed legislation to increase transparency in the energy production side of things. Again, uh, Senator Nelson carried that, Tan Parker was the uh, House sponsor, and it provides for additional air monitoring stations around the, the Barnett Shell region right here in, 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 in Fort Worth and Tarrant and Parker County and that part of our state. And then there's HB2, or excuse me, 3, 328, 3328. And now that one again, Representative Keffer and Representative Parker, they did the heavy lifting on that. And uh, I, I will tell you, this is a piece of legislation that has national implications. You talk about two visionary guys taking an issue that is very important that could have been used for uh, negative purposes against the uh, state of Texas if we weren't being very transparent, very forward, and it is uh, requires additional disclosure of the materials used in hydraulic fracking. Uh, this new fracking material disclosure law, and it is one of the first, and I might say the strongest in the nation, will help ensure safety and environmental quality while in encouraging American energy production and reducing dependence on foreign oil. So taken together, SB 527 and HB 3328 are going to really reinforce what we already know, and that is that hydraulic fracking is safe and is an effective way to unlock decades worth of energy trapped far beneath our state surface. Now, the success of hydraulic fracking uh, led to uh, the opening of, of major fields like the Barnett Shell, uh, these newer fields that we're finding, the, uh, the Haynesville over in northeast Texas, this just monstrously big field in south Texas uh, called the Eagle Ford, uh, creating thousands of jobs. I mean, you just think about, there's some young south Texan who may have been working a menial job a year and a half ago. And that individual today is working on a drilling rig making 30 bucks an hour. He's talking to his new wife about buying a new truck, about buying a home. 
They're sitting in the quietness of the evening talking about being able to have children and pay their way to college. You think about how lives are going to be changed in such a powerful way as Texas leads the way in the production of a home-produced energy source. I'm so excited about that. Um, and, and this was not a success that was created through a mandate um, or some draconian penalties that, you know, some states uh, or, or the federal government in particular would, 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 you know, with their big hammer of regulation come down. Um, this was a success created by the brightest minds of the energy industry sitting down together tackling this challenge head on and creating the drilling techniques that would be held by energy experts as the biggest innovation in the first decade of the century. The state's biggest contribution was keeping our economic climate favorable. Um, we, we hear this story every day about companies relocating to the state of Texas because these members of the legislature understood that if you'll keep the taxes low and the regulatory climate fair and predictable, a legal system that doesn't allow for oversuing, then get out of the way. People will come to that climate. They long for the freedom to live in that type of a climate. I always thought that was the way it was supposed to work. The truth of the matter is, America needs all the innovation that we can muster to reduce our dependency on foreign sources of energy. And again, our combination of job creation, improved air quality here in Texas, that it can be done and that is the right way. We refer to it as the Texas way. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to ask Jim Keffer to come up here, the chairman of the uh, House Energy Resources Committee. He has had a great legislative session, and I will tell you his name is being put on some pieces of legislation uh, that are going to make a difference in Texas for a long, long time. Mr. Chairman, welcome. Thank, Thank you for being here. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Thank you all very much. I think that would look good in red and black also, i gotta, I got to say. <laughs> You know, uh, Governor, uh, you're talking about the Texas way. Um, you know, I've been outside like you have. I haven't seen any pigs flying. And as far as I know, hell did not freeze over. But we successfully got the environmental community and the oil and gas industry to work together to come up with this great bill. And it's a bipartisan effort also. So that is the Texas way. Matter of fact, I want, well, before I forget, I want to thank my joint officers that are here. Myra Crownover, who's uh, vice chair of our committee, Tan Parker, uh, Lon Burnham, and Mark Stroma, who couldn't be with us today, but all had great hand and input in this to make sure that we kept on the straight and narrow, kept our focus, and kept this bill uh, between the uh, lines, as, uh, as we say. But 3328 will provide the much needed transparency to an industry practice that is not commonly understood, but is playing a vital role now in our economy. With the passage of this bill, Texas is the first state to require public disclosure of all chemical ingredients used for hydraulic fracturing on a well-by-well -well basis while protecting the, the trade secrets of companies who have invested millions and millions of dollars to develop this important technology. This bill strikes a balance between creating sustainable market for business and ensuring the health and the safety. Matter of fact, that ought to be the other way around. Ensuring the health and safety of the public first, and then a sustainable market for the state of Texas and this business community. Governor Perry, as always, I thank you for your support. I thank you for recognizing, for getting it, that uh, Texas is uh, ahead in this nation because of your great leadership. And uh, now the rules with uh, Commissioner Porter, Commissioner Jones, uh, we're looking forward to, uh, to those coming out to get this done and uh, get it done right. But I'll tell you, this is a template, I think, for the 
for the nation to look at and I hope to help uh, other states to have uh, sail formations and to, to help them with this needed uh, uh, industry and this needed product to get our uh, sales off of uh, uh, oil from people that don't like us anyway. And this will be a great boon for our country. And again, it was a great uh, 82nd legislature and I thank you, my joint authors, for this. And uh, God bless you, God bless Texas. Well, thank you. It's an honor to be here. My name is Brian Shaw. I'm the chairman of the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. And it is a pleasure to be here and be talking a little bit about the Texas way instead of what I've recently been uh, had the opportunity to discuss some of the EPA way. Uh, specifically, you may see some things in the paper, as Governor Perry mentioned, with regard to the flexible permit program that EPA has denied and, and for no apparent good reason other than that they've decided they don't like the Texas way. Uh, and then more recently with regard to the, uh, what was the clean air transport rule, now is the, uh, they've, been, they've named it something different, a uh, cross-state air pollution rule. And the concerns that I have, and I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but there's a great contrast between the innovation that we've seen in Texas and the innovation that these bills that we're talking about today are going to allow us to continue to have where we move forward working to meet my agency's goal, which is to work for a clean environment to protect the air, water, and provide for safe disposal of waste, but to do so in a way that is consistent with continued economic growth. Because I think we have a realization that it's not a choice between economic growth and a clean environment, but instead we have to have both or we'll have neither. And I think the state of Texas, led by the, the state legislature as well as Governor Perry, have shown a great example for how that can be accomplished and I think it's evident in the, the jobs numbers that were talked about earlier, as well as the environmental benefits that we see. I want to point out a couple of the benefits of these, these pieces of legislation that uh, we're here talking about today, just to give a couple of details to throw into context the level of commitment that this state has shown toward not just creating rhetoric and creating the feel-good types of uh, things that we see coming out of EPA, but instead to actually put money behind the words and to put things on the ground. Specifically, the Texas Natural Gas Vehicle Grant Program is looking to invest about up to $9 million a year in replacement and or retrofit of medium and heavy duty uh, engines and vehicles. So this will be actually putting in cleaner technology, getting those natural gas vehicles in the road and ha enjoying those reduced emissions. One of the things the governor talked about has been one of the long challenges with regard to alternative fuels and, and particularly natural gas. And that is, if I buy that vehicle, where can I refuel it? Is that going to be a challenge? Well, this legislature saw fit with both the alternative fueling facilities program as well as the clean transportation triangle to put money behind that to develop that infrastructure so that those vehicles can be put on the road with a recognition that not only can we operate them cheaply, effectively, cleanly, but also that we will be able to operate them uh, in a business manner where we can find fuel and, and make uh, progress in, in furthering our development of clean fuels and cleaner and other technologies that, that we can make marketably available. And then finally, I want to talk about the air monitoring. We've had a strong commitment to TCEQ, and this legislature and governor have as well, to ensuring that we're able to measure and have good scientific data to back up and, and guide our regulatory process. We have in the Barnett Shell is now becoming, if, if it's not now, it certainly will be soon, one of, if not the most monitored regions in the world. And that's due to the state-of-the-art uh, automatic uh, gas chromatographs that we have, as well as our network of other sampling and monitoring tools. The bottom line is we're committed to making sure that we have good data to ensure that when we say the air is clean, we can prove it. And if we find problems with the air, we can have the information and data to develop solutions that will allow us to solve those problems and be able to look to the citizen of Texas in the eye and say, these regulations make sense. The, the regulated community can take to heart that we considered the, the issue. We try to do our homework and avoid unintended consequences and that we develop regulatory programs that make sense as the governor's laid out earlier. So with that, I'm appreciative of the opportunity to work in. It's such a relief to be working in a state where we have a good eye on finding a strong economy and protecting the environment. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Representatives. Brian, thank you very much. We, we're really blessed in Texas to have a chairman at the TCEQ that not only is an intellectual giant, but that's always very, that is also very wise. And uh, so, Brian, thank you for your, for your leadership. And, you and um, <laughs> with that, I want to ask Myra, David, and Tan to come up with us and let's sign these bills.